Since we're talking about inversing relations, let's take a moment to see how this reflection around y equals x can be interpreted within the equations themselves. For example, if f in terms of x is 3x plus 2, then what is the inverse of f in terms of x? Well, we're not graphing in this case. We're just working with the equation, a bit of algebra. And we always start by recognizing that inversing means reflecting around y equals x and also means switching the x and y values. So let's just switch the x and y values in this equation. We'll replace the f in terms of x with y, and then the x's become y's and the y's become x's. And we're left with x equals 3y plus 2. And at this point, well, technically, this is the inverse equation now. But given that, most teachers or test questions will ask you to rearrange the equation so that the y is by itself on the left, kind of what we're used to. So let's work on that. So let's solve for the y or isolate it on the left. And we'll start by swapping the sides so that the y is on the left, noting that we can swap two sides of an equal sign whenever we want. If a equals b, then b equals a. And in this case, we're left with 3y plus 2 equals x. Now, we're still trying to get the y by itself. And we're currently adding 2, so let's subtract a 2. And whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. And we're left with 3y equals x minus 2. Now, we have to get rid of that 3 out front. We're currently multiplying by 3, and the opposite of multiplying by 3 is dividing by 3. And whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. And we have our organized inverse equation. And at this point, we could replace the y again just to represent that inverse function. And that's it. To inverse an equation, really, just two main steps. One, swap the x and y's. And two, solve for the y, just to be organized. 